Hello, Hope Community Chapel. Your pastor uh, speaking to you from Montana, uh, visiting family. I, I am so uh, uh, torn because I would love to be with my church family during this time. And um, because of that, I, I just wanted to send you a, a video message to wish you a, a blessed and Merry Christmas this season. And so since I will not be there this Sunday, I just wanted to take a, a few minutes to, to say hello and, and, and give you a brief message. And I was reading a bit of the Christmas story, Luke chapter 2, uh, the other day and had a few thoughts. You know, the Christ child was born in Bethlehem. And before his birth, Joseph and Mary traveled from Bethlehem to Nazareth, right? And why did they have to do this? I think you have read the story enough that since Caesar Augustus decreed that a census be taken, all adult males had to register where their family line was from. If you ever wondered why uh, God chose Mary, Joseph is one reason. Luke 2 verse 4 tells us that Joseph was from the line of David. David was from the line of Abraham. Abraham from the line of Shem, right? We learned about Shem, the Semites, Israelites, God's chosen people. Without question, Mary was special. She was submitted to God while living in a morally bankrupt world. History confirms that men like Caesar Augustus and Herod and other major leaders of the day were bereft of any human virtue. God chose Mary because of her character. But the genealogy of, genealogy of Joseph was through David. And in order to ensure God's prophecy, the Messiah would be through the line of David, the king of Israel. Despite the world in which they lived, Joseph and Mary had proven themselves as faithful as Noah was in his day. Scripture tells us that the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the earth so that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. And according to the Christmas story, God's eyes settled on these two faithful Israelites to be the parents of the Holy One sent by God. For God so loved the world that he tapped Mary and Joseph to raise up Jesus in a world languishing in wickedness. What a humbling responsibility for them. And what an incredible honor. But why Joseph, right? We don't hear about Joseph anywhere in Scripture beyond Jesus' 12th birthday. Beyond that, there is no biblical record of Joseph. However, Joseph, of, the Dave, of David's lineage, was found faithful as well. He wasn't just in the line of David. He was also faithful. Jesus had to be born in Bethlehem, but Joseph and Mary lived in Nazareth. Not to worry, though. For God, this was not a problem at all, because he controls even the wicked rulers like Caesar Augustus. When God, with, when God uh, or when governments do horrendous things, like behave wickedly or enact sinful laws, we trust that God allows it to happen. So when Caesar came up with the first ever census, verse 2 of chapter 2, it must have seemed to be political overreach just to collect more taxes. And I'm sure it was in, in Caesar's mind. And what a random first ever census thing to do to the people of the day. It was incredibly inconvenient and requiring so many people to travel across many miles just to register physically. But as you and I read the Christmas story to our children this season in front of a Christmas tree or a fireplace, we need to understand that God was discreetly moving people and pieces into place so that his will would be done. And in the end, God's prophecy came to pass with incredible historic clarity. From the details of the leaders in place, to the recording of the census, to the Roman lineage-based edict, making people physically register, to the young, engaged Jewish couple, all of it was intimately orchestrated. What a beautiful example of God's sovereignty. Everything was on purpose, though in man's eyes, even today, all of it seems like random unrelated events that came together 
And oh, by the way, the Messiah was born. You see that? You see how God works? It's so beautiful. However, no one in all of history can question the details of the birth of Jesus because those details are historically recorded. Yes, in the Bible, but without outside the Bible as well. It's a beautiful thing. Joseph's role is not insignificant. Mary's role, not insignificant. God chose each of them and the pair of them for a specific reason, because they were both ready and willing to be vessels for God's glory. Did they completely grasp the significance of what they were being called to do? Probably not. None of us know how God will use us for his purpose. And it's why we are called to always be ready and willing and faithful to carry out his will. Mary and Joseph were living obscure lives in the obscure village of Nazareth when God sought them out to do something that would echo through history as one of the most remarkable stories of faith. Your place in this world is not insignificant either. When you submit yourself to God's will, his use for you will not often come on your terms. There is no need to labor to make it happen. He calls you to be faithful. God called Joseph and Mary. It was not because they were laboring or working hard to make something happen. It was also not random. It was because like Noah, they proved themselves faithful to God. As you anticipate the celebration of God's extravagant gift of a savior this season, please share it with your children share it with others, and be awed by how he has placed you exactly where you need to be for his sake. God bless you and Merry Christmas, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.